Tell me one thing in your life that is great that came as a result of being comfortable. Because everywhere I look and everywhere I see in today's society, everybody's doing everything they can to be more comfortable. They're looking for the more convenience. They're looking for the quicker. They're looking for the faster. See, there's opportunity in that for those of you that want to get better. Because I'm going to tell you right now, all the reasons that these successful people that you look up to, that you aspire to be like, are the way they are, have all come from a place of being uncomfortable. Understand that when you're trying to avoid the pain, when you're trying to avoid the struggle, when you're trying to avoid the hard things, you are actively choosing to be average. You are actively choosing to be mediocre. And you are actively choosing to move further away from what you want in life. Because that hardship and that pain and that struggle, they give you the skills that will forge you into a mother champion. It's not about circumstance. It's not about luck. We all get the good and the bad. We all get the challenging events that arrive in our life. That's a normal part of being human. I'm talking about what you choose to do with those circumstances. There's people in here far superior than me, but there's no one in here that's gonna work harder than me. We get up at 5.30 in the morning, it's pitting rain outside. Our competition's sleeping. I love that. If you were waiting for the economy to change, if you're waiting for your paycheck to change, waiting for your relationship to change, waiting for something to change, nothing will change. If you want change, you must change. I will not be outworked, period. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. While the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. Talent you have naturally. Positive daily habits, locked in. Working on myself daily, locked in. Reading more, learning more, committing to be better every day, lock it in. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. The commodity, the majority of people who aren't achieving the things that they want is strictly based on hustle. It's strictly based on being outworked. It's strictly based on missing crucial opportunities. When you change, everything will change for you. If you want better, you must be better. And when you get better, your life will get better. You might outwork me for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, but you ain't gonna beat me over a year. You can't outwork me over two years. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'm a dripping damn faucet. I just keep coming at you. I'm too damn tough to give up. Most people half-ass half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna get down. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless. You must work on yourself more than you work on anything else. You must add more value to others than anyone else does. One of the great lessons of life is that nothing will change unless you change. Nothing will get better unless you get better. Take a step back and look at your life closely. What can you improve? Be honest with yourself. In every area of your life, what can you improve? If you're being honest, there will be many areas you can improve. If not, you're either not human or you're lying to yourself. If you think that you're gonna go and accomplish something really special, and be the best in anything in the world, and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, if it was in bodybuilding or in acting or music, I will receive better because I will be better. I will get changed because I will change. Bodybuilding, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. And you got to put out, and you got to, you know, something to take a lot of sacrifices in order. If you're not willing to work hard, forget about it. So this is another rule. It is very important. Have the courage to live the life you want to live, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Nothing 
will change unless you change. Nothing will get better unless you get better. It's all about you. Work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. Yes, I get up at crazy hours, whether it's 3 o'clock in the morning, by the way, when we were talking in London, mm -hmm. I was getting up at 3 because I had to be on set by 7. If you're like most, you'll take the easy path. You won't take action. You won't decide right now to make a change. You won't take action right now on changing your life. But you're not like the rest. So whatever time my call time is, so my call time is at 7, then you back your clock up four hours, and then that's when I get up and I train twice. I'm doing cardio in and practice, and then I'll go hit the weights. Clanging and banging, we call it. Commit to work on improving those areas. Remove everything unimportant in your life that could get you sidetracked from your goals and purpose. Anything that takes you further away from the life you want. The only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. I will run. You will not be outworked. I will not be outworked. What's stopping you? Are you too tired? Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Don't have enough money? Is that the thing? Or is the thing that's stopping you, you? Eliminate. It might be TV. It might be people in your life. It might be unhealthy habits. You know what it is. Look within. Be honest with yourself. This is your life we are talking about. Nothing is more important. Be honest with yourself. Be strong. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off the pity party. Telling everybody your sad and sob stories, trying to get people to show up to your pity parties and your pity parades. If you ever see me in a Rolls Royce, a six or seven star hotel, living my life to the fullest, don't get jealous of me. Because I worked my ass off to get it. Nobody handed me nothing. You wouldn't be listening to this if you were. Decide right now. This is it. I will take action right now. The second this ends, I'm going to set up my life to win. All things that take me further away from the life I want, out. Wake your ass up. Awaken the beast inside. It's game on. It's go season. It's time for you to take advantage of the access and the resources that you have in your country and your community. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want it, go get it. The road to success is hard, but it isn't impossible unless you quit. Stick it out, suffer through. Show your character, and one day they might speak of you. You, the winner. You, the champion. The one who didn't quit. The one who fought back, fought with heart, with courage. Recognize the excuses are not valid. What this emotion is telling you is you need to change your perception because otherwise you're going to feel pain for no reason. You might also look at this same situation as a symbol that you need to change your procedure. But for some of you, that contract messed you up. You soft now. You ain't as hungry as you was when you was in high school. You ain't as hungry as you was when you was in college. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sale, sets a better sale. So don't ask for a more favorable win. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Anybody can give up, anybody can let it overwhelm you, but you know what that's doing wasting your pain. 
that pain is not there to stop you, it's there to prepare you to increase you to develop you. Difficulties are a part of life. Now quit telling yourself you can't take it. You're not weak, you are well able. Eventually the pain will pass, you'll give birth to new strength. Just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. There will always be forces trying to convince us to settle where we are. Life has a way of pushing our dreams down. Procedure means the way you're proceeding with this information. In other words, what this may be is a signal to you that you really aren't communicating your real needs to your husband or to your wife. Maybe what you need to do is change your procedure, and instead of feeling hurt, or instead of feeling uncomfortable, turn to your husband or wife and say, Honey, you know, I know you're wrapped up in your work. I know you're totally immersed. I know you're trying to do stuff that support the whole family here. But you know what? I just need, you know, three minutes with just you, just you and I, because I really need right now to just feel loved by you. I need to hold you. I need to feel connected to you. Now, if that person starts to get upset, Obviously, you're getting feedback that your procedure still didn't work. You have to be a little more flexible, a little more creative, or maybe a little bit more loving in the way you do it. Or maybe change the timing in which you go about something. But that's changing procedure, changing the way you communicate. Or another way of changing procedure might be it's a signal that says that the way you're communicating to your husband or wife doesn't make them want to make you feel loved right now. You ain't as hungry as you were your first year. You ain't as hungry as you were your second year. And you can tell it like we could see it in your game. You a grown man. Like, I, I used to watch the game and go like, okay, what's the difference between this team and this team? And it's just like the players. I'm like, no, it's got to be big, bigger than that. Like, they're all grown. They're all big. They're all tight. They shoot the same way. And I started realizing some dudes come with that beast and other dudes just show up. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. This is going to be hard because some of you are young and you like still worried about what people think about you. So you don't want to be honest in front of people. But I'm going to ask you a serious question. If 120% is like, yo, but coach, I work harder than coach want me to work. And then 100% is, I do everything coach tell me to do. I want you to think about what level you want. Are you giving 90, 80, 70? Let's see what I'm saying for a minute. And most of y'all know me, you know me from where? Like, where would you know me from? That your present behavior may be turning them off. For example, let's say you feel rejected by them because when you come in the door, they don't rush up and give you a hug. They're immersed in something. Now, how do you respond to that? Well, what a lot of people do when they feel rejected is they feel uncomfortable with it or they feel hurt or some people get angry when they feel rejected. Now, what's the message of anger? The message of anger is you have a standard for your life, something that's important to you and it's not being met by another person or maybe even not being met by you. Sometimes we get angry because we're not living our own standards, huh? So let's say as a result, one of your standards is that people who love you, they run up and they greet you in your home. They don't do that today. You feel angry. One of your standards has been violated. Something you believe important is not happening, and now you're angry about it. How do you respond now to your spouse who doesn't even know what's going on? Maybe you give them a dirty look, or maybe you make some snide remark, or you find something wrong with what they're doing. As a result, this person may very well purposely reject you. Now when you're feeling this rejection, and you're feeling this hurt or this anger, and you say, okay. Social media. Where would you know me from? Say it again. Social media. Yeah, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Watch this. I give 120. So I just got up eight years ago, I'm sorry, 12 years ago, just started getting online. It was a recession at the time. And I saw what was going on in America. I'm from Detroit, GM, Chrysler Ford went down. People started going to the casinos, shooting themselves, killing themselves. I was like, I got a gift. I'm just going to get online and kill it. Every Monday I would get up. Thank God it's Monday. Kill it. Nike never sponsored me. Adidas never sponsored me. Under Armour never sponsored me. I get up every Monday and get a world or something. Then it got crazy. I start meeting people and people be like, yo, E.T., what up? Thank God it's money. I'm like, ooh, they feeling this. So then I start doing it every day. <laughs> and then I start realizing cats is really feeling this. And I started doing it three times a day. You wake up and get three videos from me. You don't pay a dime for it. That's 120. Ain't nobody paying me, but I'm giving it out. Year after year after year. Boom, commercials. Year after year. Meek like E, I want to put you on my album. It can become buried under discouragement, buried under past mistakes. There are dreams buried under divorce, buried under low self-esteem. It's easy to settle for mediocrity even, though we have all this potential buried on the inside. What are you remembering the hurt, the pain, what didn't work out? Turn it around and remember your dream. Have you allowed any dreams to get buried in you? At one time you believed you could do something great. You believed you could lead the company. In sales you believed you could break bad addiction. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got's what's available. Don't curse what you got. The key is to set a better sale and turn what you've got into the miracle of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. That's the reason for coming here, spending a couple of days of intense effort, 
taking notes, rolling up your sleeves, going to work, commit yourself to learning so that you can get smarter for the days ahead. Now here's number three. You've got to get going. All of the things that you've learned will not do you that much good if you don't put it into an action plan. You've got to get going. I don't care if it's babysitting. I don't care if it's doing color. I don't care if it's painting. Whatever it is, it's what you do. Sing it. Whatever you do the best, write it down. That's your gift. That's it. You ain't got to go asking a bunch of people. They've been telling you your whole life. You know, you ever have people call you with their problems? They always call you with your problems because you gifted at it. But you didn't, you didn't know how to identify it. If you identify your gift. Now, let me ask you this question. This thing that you're gifted at, if you did it for somebody, do you think somebody would pay you $10 for your gift? Just $10. Could you babysit for $10? Could you cut somebody's hair for $10? Could you cut their grass for $10? Could you make them a chicken dinner for $10? Could you, could you, could you do something for $10? Everybody, don't you have something somebody would give you $10 for? Okay, now. It's been a long time. Had some bad breaks, wasn't all your fault. You could easily settle where you are, nobody would fault you. The enemy would love to deceive you into burying your dream, thinking that it's never going to work. Out, don't believe those lies, it's not too late to become all that you were created to be. Every time you remember your dream, you're removing some dirt you're digging. It back out the true mark of a champion, is even though some dirt gets thrown on your dream instead of letting it get buried, you keep shaking it off, you keep moving forward. In my management and leadership seminar, we teach game plans, how to put all the good things that you've learned into action. Economic action, social action, personal action, how to make the changes and how to actually do the work, how to actually function. Get going, that's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action. They don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material, and he just stacks up all these supplies, but he never builds anything. See, if you do that long enough, fairly soon they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So that's one of the most important things to learn, how to design your days, how to design your weeks, how to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Once you have something that somebody's willing to pay you $10 for, this is how this works. It's called the multiples of 10. See, you don't have to figure out how to be a millionaire. You just got to figure out the thing that makes you $10. So now here we go. You do it and you make $10. As soon as they pay you the 10, go do it 10 more times. Whatever it was. Watch some more kids 10 more times. Get another 10. You got $100. When you get $100, whatever you did to make that $100, listen to me. Do it 10 more times. You ain't got to get tricky with it. Just do it 10 more times. You'd have made $1,000. Whatever you did to make the $1,000, don't get smart. Stay stupid now. Do it 10 more times. You have now made $10,000. Hold up. Now we finna grow a little bit, but guess what you gotta do to grow? You just gotta do some more. You wouldn't be having that opposition if you didn't have something great in you. If your dream wasn't alive and on track, right on schedule to come to pass, you wouldn't have so many things coming against you. That dream is still alive. You may have tried a year ago, five years ago, or 40 years ago. Didn't work out. Nobody was there to help you go back and try again. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is calling out to you. Can I tell you your dream is not dead? It's just not in season. The only way you can know what you got the only way you can step into the moment and be fully prepared for the moment, the only way you can deal with the thing and know that you got what it takes to sustain it is to build it from the ground up, then you really know what you got. Life is serious. I didn't take life seriously for a very long time. I, I didn't know. And I didn't know that I didn't know, and I thought I knew. Life is serious, but because I did not believe in myself, 
For 14 years, I sat on the sideline, living a life that wasn't me, working on jobs that was not me, and got fired again and again and again. In life, when you don't have enough courage and insight to know that where you are is not your rightful place, life will move on you. Life moved on me and said, come up higher. I got something else for you. And I'm saying to you, if you've had lights snatched the rug out from under you, you've lost your job, your business, your relationship, it's not over until you win. When what you believe infiltrates behavior, the process gives you foundation. When what you believe infiltrates behavior, the process gives you foundation. When adversity hits, what are you going to do? Are you going to fold? Are you going to bend? Are you going to cry? Are you going to fall apart? What are you going to do when adversity hit? What are you going to do when you lose your job? Are you going to sit there and cry? Or are you going to get up and stop playing and get busy? We, again, like I said before, have the power to change things. Listen, in this world, adversity is going to happen. One way or the other. It's going to happen. So you need to stop playing and get busy. Look adversity dead in the face and say, let's go. Let's go. No time for us no more to be playing games. No time for us no more to be scared or go ahead in the corner. We have to look adversity in the eye and keep moving. Get busy. What is that truth we must know? That you're greater than anything that life throws at you. Don't come up in here and you play it. I don't play. I'm serious. Only one serious people. Hungry people. So you can live a life that will outlive you. So you can leave a legacy rather than liabilities. You know what you should do? Every time you get a chance to experience first class, you should do it. Because it plants a seed. It's like the next time you buy an airplane ticket, just ask for an upgrade. Pay a little extra money, fly first class. What it does is it conditions your mind. Once you sit in first class one time, the next time you get on the plane, it's very difficult to walk past them seats. And then your mind starts thinking of ways to get back to first class. And guess what? That's what you start attracting to your life. And you start behaving and producing stuff to get you back into first class. So, I mean, just go look around. Uh, I mean, being in the military does not make you a disciplined person. Being from a disciplined family does not make you a disciplined person. Being in a, a disciplined group does not make you a disciplined person. What makes you a disciplined per person is choosing to be disciplined, right? There's things that you know you're supposed to do as a human being. Things that you know are gonna improve your life. Do those things. There's things that you know are gonna make you a worse person and make your life worse. Don't do those things. Don't do the things that are making you weaker. Start doing the things that are gonna make you stronger and smarter and faster and healthier and gonna make you a better human being. You wanna be more disciplined? Get after it. And no, it is not easy. But you're not gonna get it from anyone else but you. And it's worth it. And it is the thing that is going to bring you freedom. You were chosen for something. Get with that, know that, be with that. Live your life from that place. And don't, don't judge what the possibilities are for your life based upon where you are right now. Where you are right now is, is, is your, your, your rightful place. Your rightful place is where your thoughts have brought you. Your true place, your true place is where your thoughts can take you. You created an opening. You about to take off now. You about to go to another level now. This is your time. You got to say that to yourself. This is my time. Even if you don't have no money to rub together. Why? Unless you, you got to be crazy. Absolutely. Yeah.
yes. You got to be out of your mind to say that. You don't, you've you lost your business. You've gone through foreclosure. You lost your job. Your marriage is on the rocks. The kids are going crazy. Yeah. You got to be out of your mind. In order for you to reinvent yourself, you got to let another mind be in you. Mm. It is the struggle. It is the wrestling. It is the pulling. It is the trial. It is the temptation. It is the stumbling and falling and getting back up again. It is the aggravation and the intimidation that gives you foundation. It's not just the mechanical influence of robotically doing. It is just that as you go to do it, you learn things about yourself that you didn't know. You learn how to go Go through aggravation and heartache. You learn how to deal with obstacles and situations. And while you're trying to do, all of a sudden you're going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. It is the process that gives you foundation. It is, it is the struggle. The discipline of doing says there is no shortcut to excellence. You, you, you just can't fast track it. You don't get discipline from your parents. You don't get discipline from your parents, from your grandparents, from your older brothers and sisters. You don't get discipline from an external source. You have to get it from you. That's what self-discipline is. You get it from yourself. You get it from you. There's people from every possible background from no parents to crazy parents to you know drug addicted parents to super squared away parents and everywhere in between on that spectrum that are completely disciplined people more disciplined than anyone i know and just got to stop playing around and get serious most people like me for a period of my life was seriously not serious People who are serious are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. They're serious. When something happens to us, rather than surrender, rather than give in to the naysayers, rather than say, I can't do it. I don't have the money. I don't have the contacts. I don't know the right people. Or oh, I tried it, did not work. Keep moving. See, nothing works unless you work. And have the mindset, this is my time. That energy, listen to me, listen to me. That energy, this is my time. This is the moment for my breakthrough. Have no sign and nothing to point to to justify this state of mind. There's a power that we have in us that most of us never tap into. People get more excited about a sporting event than the life that's in them to do something magnificent, to manifest their greatness. It's time to get real. It's time to get raw. It's time to look ourselves in the mirror and come to the resolve that this version of ourself is not going to carry us in the stretch. I've been this version of myself long enough that if I don't change, if I don't do something about this, you a man, you don't have to show people you have what you really have. You have it. But when you're a boy and you seek attention, you need people to see what you have. Pursue your gift and not your passion. And gifts don't have to be running, jumping, singing, dancing. Teaching is a gift. Then I'm going to find myself bankrupt. For me to understand, for me to be better, for me to be stronger, I must learn to suffer a little bit. I must learn to struggle a little bit. I cannot reap the rewards of success without understanding about struggles. Success is not automatic. You don't get things just because you want them. If you really have it, shouldn't it be enough that you have it? 
So what I'm hoping for this group, I'm asking that a group of males would make sure they transition from malehood to boyhood to adolescence to manhood and then the man's man. Malcolm was a man's man. Malcolm came out from Detroit Red to Malcolm X. When Malcolm came out, like they, listen to me very closely, they were able to convince women to join. They couldn't, they couldn't get the pimps and the hustlers to do it. When Malcolm came out, Malcolm, Malcolm was Chicago, Detroit, New York. Malcolm was all over the world recruiting men. And I'm talking about if y'all saw, again, you achieve your goals only when you are disciplined enough to keep showing up when you don't feel like it. You're going to put the blood, you're going to put the sweat, you're going to put the tears in, you're going to lose sleep, you're going to go days without eating, you're going to do whatever it takes to make the sacrifices necessary to manifest. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said, you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. Son, you're just a dream. That thing you're dreaming is never gonna happen. I would ask myself every single day, are you just a dreamer? Or are you a person who can grind until they execute? Somebody who can make that dream a reality, is that true? Some of it is fiction, but some of it is true. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, when the Italian mob came up with the guns, Malcolm said, you got people with guns. I got men willing to die for me. What? Y'all got guns. My guys, they don't just got guns. They willing to lose their life for me. What? When the nation was up, when they, what nobody playing. When a man was on the block, they weren't playing with Malcolm X. They weren't playing with the nation of Islam. They playing with us. They don't take us serious. So they don't mind driving and coming in and blowing up our neighborhood because they like, the men ain't going to be there anyway. Go do your homework and see who was shot and killed. The men ain't gonna be there anyway. They gonna be somewhere either sleeping around, they gonna be going somewhere trying to make some money. They not gonna be at the king. You can't come to a kingdom that's protected. You can't run up on a kingdom that's protected, but you can run up on a kingdom full of boys. You can run up on a kingdom full of boys. The best things won't come out, the best of you won't show up if you feel that all you know is sorrow. Why do you allow misery to handcuff you? To chain you down, resurrect yourself. From the pit of darkness, music, because misery doesn't have the right to control your life when the rest of the world says no to you. You say yes to yourself, you say yes. I believe you say yes, I can do it, you say yes. Nothing can stop me, there's no time to give up. This is the opportunity to be greater than your fears. Be stronger than your doubts, make your mind matter. Misery, it will continue to do all that is necessary. To succeed, misery is on a mission to take everything away from you. Nursing is a gift. Networking is a gift. Child care is a gift. Those are gifts, man. People, you can have a great life at that. But don't come out here to sing and dance if that ain't what you do. They're they going to eat you alive in L.A. They're going to swallow you up, man. L.A. is a hard place to go to be successful. Very, very difficult, man. There's a lot of broken dreams out there. So that's my advice to you. It's your dream and your drive that makes you successful. It has nothing to do with your... Nothing to do with education. So if you're sitting out there and you're not an educated person, don't let that stop. That, that, don't even let that be the reason. Make that re be the reason why you become successful. That's what I did. I didn't have an education for myself. But because you don't have an education, you can't be successful. You got vision, you got God. I don't know if you've read the Bible, but education ain't in there. <laughs> Harvard and USC, Emory, it's not even in the Bible. It ain't in there. Dreams and visions. Faith, dreams, and vision. You build Broadway with faith, dreams, and vision. And your gift, that's all you need to succeed. Now, if you want to be a dentist or a doctor or a lawyer, well, come on now, you got to go to school, right? I'm not saying, because school is important. But if you don't have one of them skill sets, man, what you going to do? Get to hustle. Your mind is very powerful, bringing the goodness, moving with a purpose, conditioning your mind is what this is about today, is that day and when and if tomorrow comes for you. Be even more powerful, be stronger than you've ever been. 
Rectifying yourself, believe in yourself, keep that faith in yourself, don't let the outside interference stop your growth, don't let those that doubted you and said that you did not have it hold you back, don't let the losses keep you down. Because if you're down, how would you understand what it means to get up? What is good about being miserable? What is misery doing for you? What has misery done for you lately? Has it given you everything that you needed, made you a better person? You'll never go back to your words. Join a new crowd, join a new group. This is the place to do. take action. I recommended the last time I was here the little book, Richest Man in Babylon, and I said, I've lectured now to over three million people in the last 33 years, and I've recommended this little book to almost all of them, I think. Guess how many have actually gone and got this little book? Answer, very few. My best guess is 10%. Such an easy thing to do. In that last seminar, right, I suggested this little book, number one, is easy to find. Number two, it's easy to buy. The most you can pay for it, six, seven, eight dollars. You can borrow that from your kids. And number three, it's easy to read. It's in story form. That's why I use it for teenagers, teaching them how to be rich by 40, 35, if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. Your mind, your abilities, your faith within yourself, it's all that you need, the steps that you take in your life, it's a process within itself. It won't be easy, but you don't deserve easy. Easy is not something that you should be looking for. Embrace all of the challenges that are necessary, but you continue to fight forward, you continue to believe in yourself. How do we allow ourselves elevate the game to go higher than we've ever gone before? How do we escape from the misery, the joy? Is what we seek the joy of living? But if it's easy to find and easy to buy, and if it's easy to read, why wouldn't everybody go get it? We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Here's how profound it is. Some do and some don't. Now here's the numbers. About 10% do. 90% don't or won't. We don't know the mystery of that. And I'm telling you, 10 years from now, those numbers will still be the same. 10% will, 90% won't. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change. You're looking at one of the faces. I used to belong to the 90% who couldn't be bothered even if it was easy. Guess how many people have a library card? Wisdom of the world available. Transform your life in any value amount you want. By the way, how much is a library card in Texas? The joy of pursuing, the joy of believing. Are you ready to succeed? Are you prepared to move forward? Make it count, be productive, be powerful, and from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. They say, they say, a mind of mind is a terrible thing to. Waste mind is so powerful. It's so unique, it can do many things, and you are the one that is responsible for the thoughts that enter your mind. How do we, how do we as individuals, as people get away from misery? How do we allow ourselves to elevate the game to go higher? Do you know why true friends are considered a treasure these days? Because it's so damn hard to find one. Unfortunately, most of us are surrounded by toxic people who only pretend to be our friends so long as they can use us. It has become very difficult to spot these fake friends because most of them have become real pros at faking friendships. In my experience, these are the people who associate themselves with you for all the wrong reasons. Even if you expect a good time, you're eventually bound to have a terrible experience with these supposedly good friends. Number one, they don't tolerate differences in opinion. Look, real friends always joke around and argue about both trivial and serious matters. Fake friends also discuss these things, but here's the difference. They won't let you win. These friends won't let you rest until they've pointed out how they're absolutely right. Somehow, it's them who know the full context and have all the correct opinions. In other words, fake friends require unearned, full-on support. There's no room for compromise. And you know what? This is bad for your emotional and mental well-being. You should have an avenue to voice out your opinions without being harassed. If your opinion is discriminatory, you should get reprimanded in a peaceful manner. And if it's them who say really offensive things, they should own up as well. Sadly, fake friends have this issue. They have a hard time accepting they're wrong. 
It's as if you're just there to please them all the time. You're not a friend to them. In truth, you're just someone expected to parrot their opinions. And if you keep on disagreeing with them, they will stop talking to you until you ask for their forgiveness. Respect is a foreign word to them. Number two, they make excuses and break their promises. There's one pretty popular saying about friendship. It goes something like this. Real friends will always have your back. Well, this isn't completely true because even the best of friends have many responsibilities, it still helps us understand why we'd want to have genuine friends. In contrast, your fake friends won't care at all. And you know what? We get it. It's completely understandable to decline an invite to hang out if you're busy. Friends shouldn't force friends to participate in social activities, but to always be unavailable? That's a trademark characteristic of fake friends. If you have fake friends in your life who are wearing you down, you simply have to learn to stand up for yourself, because you do have a choice in the matter. Number three, you're only an emotional outlet to them. We've all had this experience. After class or work, you meet your dearest friend and talk about anything and everything. You ask each other questions. How is work? Did you see anyone you're attracted to today? What book are you reading now? The point is, you share moments with each other. Both of you feel lighter and more enriched, knowing that there's someone willing to listen to you and vice versa. So what's the deal with fake friends? Well, they still listen to your rants and raves, and you're all ears when it's time for them to speak out. But here's the problem. They're more keen to rant than to rave when they're with you. Worse, they listen to your advice that they asked for, but they won't actually change their ways. In short, you're just there so that they can vent about everything. Maybe something good happened yesterday to them, but even so, they'll focus on the bad things that happened to them yesterday, or throughout the week, or the past few months even. Do you know about stress management? It's why some people do yoga every weekend. Some play video games, others read a book while having a good cup of coffee. Then there are those who scream into their pillow. Yet, even the last option is better than what fake friends do. You are their chosen way to release stress. Number four, they're only around to get what they want. Have you experienced this? As you're browsing Facebook, a friend request pops out of nowhere. You check it out and you're amused. It's someone you know at work or at school. You two have never really interacted beyond the usual greetings upon seeing each other at the elevator or down the hall. You can't even remember their name. But so what? You then proceed to accept their friend request. Soon enough, you realize the purpose of this supposed friendship. It starts out like this. They ask you how your day was. You guys talk about the stress of working or school life. You know, trivial stuff. But then something happens. Out of a sudden, they concentrate on a specific topic. This could be about your current partner or your ex, or one of your siblings. This could even be about a possible crazy drunken night you had many, many years ago. You're not exactly sure why they want to know about something so personal. But since you already see them as a good friend, you open up to them. So how does this connect to fake friends? Well, it's because they're only around you to get information. Perhaps they're a close friend of someone you broke up with. They only want to know who you're with now or if you're feeling miserable that you lost your ex. Another reason for them contacting you is that they're jealous of your recent promotion. This friend of yours is really just hoping to get a shameful story from you which they can use for bullying. The main point is they have no genuine interest in being friends with you. Number five, they can't keep a secret. It's common to develop a crush on someone. It's also not rare to share secrets about love to your friends. After all, it's fun to have someone to tell stories with. Plus, who doesn't like getting teased once in a while about their love interests? So here's the dilemma. Fake friends don't know when to shut up. It's as if it's in their nature to spill the beans the moment you're not around. They don't care about your right to privacy or that you trust them enough to keep a secret. For them, it's all about the drama. They'll even tell lies if they have to. 
This is because spilling secrets makes them feel like they have power. That, somehow, this will make them more popular or better in the eyes of others. Do you know about Gossip Girl? It's like that. Fake friends are just waiting for the next big juicy gossip from their friends. As long as it's not about them, they're more than ready to let the world know ASAP.